Hey, how's it going, everybody? So, been finding a lot of season four heroes already on defense. Elizabeth is one of the ones that people are most excited about. Um, she brings a new mechanic, and I think that newness is what is so exciting. It's like, oh, we haven't seen this combination before. So she's average speed, 175 damage to all enemies, which is a decent amount. Um with all the other stuff she has going on, which is summons a spider fiend. And it sounds like they've chosen the name fiend for a um, negative minion, you know, a minion that has negative impacts. All the other minions we've seen so far do something you want or are just a protective shield for you. These minions are not that they are negative minions. So the Fiend damages the enemy with 43% attack every turn, and that is based on her attack stat here. The Spider Fiend absorbs healing and disappears when it has absorbed health equal to 28% of the target's max health. So that means, um, you know, most healers are going to be in the range of high 20s to low 40s. So this means it would like absorb a full heal, and then it goes away but it probably has done some damage in the meantime, and now you've just wasted your full healer. So I think if we start to see her a lot on teams, it's gonna require different team compositions to go against her, um, because you'll wanna have multiple healers, I think. The final thing is Spider Fiend gives minus 24% mana generation for its owner for as long as the owner has Spider Fiends. This effect cannot be cleansed. So it, it doesn't sound like it stacks. I think as long as you have one of these on you, um, you have minus 24% mana generation. If you get three of you, three of them on you, it is still minus 24% mana generation. Um, it's like either it's there or it's not. So um, having multiple healers can help against her or having a lot of minion casters on your team because you can force these out. Any one hero can only have three minions on them at any one point. This sort of counts as a minion in that regard, and so you can kind of force them off of you without having to waste any healing. So um, that's what I'm going to use, actually, as I test this out. Um, pretty high-level troop. Oh, it's a three-star troop, though. So 16%, not that high. Um, so let's see how this goes. Another red match, we'll take out Heimdall. And then we'll focus on this side, but let's get our Black Knight first. Oop, shouldn't have waited. So now we're gonna wait even longer. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, so got this health steal on us okay one thing i want to test first is if you taunt will um will it taunt the minions to only one hero it should but i want to know for sure so we'll test that out first Yep, okay, so Taunt is effective. Couldn't see what our damage uh, was there because he happened to do the Flesh Wound thing. So the minion health that you're seeing here is going to be the equivalent of 28% of the uh, hero's overall health that it's on. So that number is going to vary depending on who gets hit. And then you can see that Garnet should be healing for like 720 and you'll see that only part of that is going to get through um, because 28% of that, or 20, the number that is 28% of the hero's health is going to get absorbed by that spider fiend. So it's a good way to block healing to heroes. It's kind of a new way of um, blocking healing and giving decreased mono generation and a little bit of damage each turn. 
So we'll get her to fire again, and then we'll see what kind of damage you can expect from uh, from this. We'll get some minions on us and show you that you can force those away as well. All right, looks like I'm going to have to hit this diamond soon. But I'm worried that might kill her. Uh, I don't see any other choice, so let's try to get as few of the reds as possible into her. Alright, that worked pretty well. We'll heal first. Okay, so now we're going to get spiders all across the board. The other thing to keep in mind is that the spiders can force out the minions that you have on you already. So I'm not at that point. Um, and then as you can see from the intentional mistake I made there... I'm going to have to cast one, two, three minions to push the spiders out. Um, and so we've got one of these, what are they called? Uh, they are called Underwild Gems. So we have one of those, which is also going to deal 50 damage. So you can see there, it's about 30 something per person. Let's see, am I going to want to face this team again? Uh, we blocked the decreased mana generation, but the interesting thing that I actually still want to see is... Well, she's going to die. We'll rematch again. One thing that I still want to see is, as soon as my ailment protection goes away, will I have that um, decreased mana generation? Because I think as long as the spider is on you, it's, it's going to continuously try to force that on you. And so you can block it for however many turns you have an ailment block for, but then once that wears off, I think you would uh, then be impacted by it. Oh, poor Heimdall. It's just getting no chance here. So what I want to do is place this protection before she goes off, which it looks like we can. So she just triggered her passive ability, oh, which, okay. So duration of the first three buffs this hero receives from special skills is increased by one turn. <coughs> it shows how many activations for that she has left. And then you can see that the immunity to status ailments is for three turns while everyone else has it for two. So we're gonna put our ailment blocking up here, which unfortunately is gonna heal Vanda. Um, now we have spiders, does a little bit of damage. Um, and now what I wanna see is when my ailment protection wears off, what is gonna happen with regard to the, um, the mana debuff. All right, so one more turn. Let's taunt Odin. Okay, so it looks like I was wrong in that it's only when the um, spider is first placed, but we'll see that after one more turn here. Do we get decreased mana? It seems like the answer is no. Um, she's gonna go off again. Let's let her. Okay, then he was taunting. Now he's got the decreased mono generation. So yeah, it's only when it's been placed. It's uncleansable. Um, because you have to get rid of all of the health of these things. So the interesting part is that I'm going to use my healer. and it's not able to remove them all. So that can put you in a real tough spot where if you don't have enough healing, this might be the most significant thing about her. Once you get that second set placed, almost no healer is gonna be able to heal enough to remove all of them. 
so now you're in the position of having to, to charge up, excuse me, having to charge up another healer while you have minus 24% mana generation. So that's pretty significant. And then you're taking, you know, each hero is taking probably 30 to 50 damage per turn. Um, so maybe a more reliable thing to do is to have multiple minion casters so you can sort of force those those out and away from you. But you can see the two that still have them. What kind of damage are we looking at? Uh, so that was only about 20. But yeah, she's a very interesting hero. I like this new mechanic. I can't say how balanced it seems yet. There's a lot of people saying that she's way too overpowered. I think people are just primed to, to sort of freak out when new stuff comes up and they don't know how it fits in. And if it seems strong, then it's automatically too strong, you know? So I don't have her. I'm not speaking for protecting my own roster. I just think it's better to take a little time to evaluate. Um, so that's not gonna be enough healing to get rid of the one on Black Knight. But as soon as I do this, we can force that thing out and then we're in okay shape. So yeah, very cool hero. Um, we've got zero rings right now, but would, uh, would definitely level her up if I had her. And I don't know where she's gonna fit in well yet. She's probably better on defense because, uh, let's see, she's probably better on defense because the spiders are gonna deal more damage um, but using her on attack could be a good way to neutralize weaker healers like Teluria. Not that Teluria is that much of a problem anymore. I don't know that I know yet where exactly she's going to fit in, but she's definitely a good hero. I don't really think she needs an adjustment yet. If you disagree, you can let me know your opinion in the comments below. Um, but I think we're already seeing her around a lot. I've been checking the leaderboard and I haven't seen any teams staying, you know, very high up after being offline for any amount of time. So I don't, she's not having a, a huge impact there. When you're looking at the leaderboard and seeing what people's cups are, if they're still online, then you're not seeing a reliable, um, you're not seeing a reliable measurement of how good their defense team is. You're just seeing how good their offensive rating is at that time. But if they've been offline for an hour and they're still over 2,900 cups or something, then you know that there's something good about that defense team. So let me know what your experience has been with her, what you think, if she's good, if she's too good, if she's not good enough. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I will be trying to do testing videos for all of the Season 4 heroes that I can find. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.